Togashi has just dropped a Nen bombshell. I know that often these titles can be admittedly a bit exaggerated, but if there was ever a time to use the word bombshell, it is right now. Togashi has completely changed how we understand Nen. He's revealed previously unknown characters' affinities, he's changed the affinity of some from previously established material, and he has introduced an entirely new category of Nen. So we've got a lot to cover and let's start with our brand new concept. Characters in Hunter x Hunter are no longer necessarily subject to a single Nen affinity. Instead, they can now be assigned dual affinities. So for example, on the Nen Ring, a character no longer needs to be a natural enhancer or transmuter, and instead they can be plonked smack bang in the middle of that their ring, thus becoming either an enhanced transmuter or a transmuter enhancer. And Togashi went on to reveal that one very key protagonist is actually a dual affinity user, and that would be best boy Killua. Previously thought of as a pure transmuter, he is now a transmuter enhancer, which makes more sense than the company who sells Killua his beloved Chocorobo Candy. In retrospect, I think I think it really does fit because Killua has never really dipped into his neighboring affinity of conjuration. And being half enhanced, so that's understandable because using his aura that way would, uh, would be very inefficient. Especially since he is still, for all intents and purposes, a rookie Nen user. Just to flag this, I often see a misconception that Killua conjured his yo yo weapons, but those were actually given to him by Miliki, who has a big Nen revelation himself that we will get into shortly. And by the way, the reason why we know all of this is because Togashi wrote slash drew a memo detailing all of these characters and where they sit on the Nen ring as part of his exhibition in Japan. So this isn't like sketchy, unreliable data book knowledge. No, this comes straight from the mouth and or hand of the dude himself. Also, this video is sponsored by Zen Market, an amazing Japanese proxy shopping service based in Osaka, Japan. Zen Market allows you to buy from over 10,000 Japanese stores, including Amazon, Yahoo Japan, Rakuten, Pokemon Centers, as well as P-Bandai, Pop-Up Parade, Ami Ami, and more. All chock full of glorious Hunter x Hunter, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Jojo merchandise. Some of which are items that are released early or in many cases only sold in Japan. And the fact that they don't ship overseas has always been the bane of my existence. But Zen Market solves all of those problems. It's a dream come true for me and a nightmare come true for my bank account. Plus Zen Market has recently added the online flea market Rakuma, hosted by one of the largest shopping sites in Japan, trusted and used by Japanese people daily. You can click my link in the description to shop through the New World Review landing page, containing all sorts of hunt hunt goodness, with free account registration, and a gift of 300 yen for new members essentially waiving the service fee of your first item. So do that thing, but for now it's back to you, me. And to clarify, even characters with dual affinity still have one innate natural affinity, which is determined by the water divination test. However, in terms of practicality, they can access either of the dual affinities with equal ease. Now to get back to said dual affinities, Marchi is another recently revealed transmuter enhancer. Again, perfect, because what she does is transmute aura into string and then make the string like really strong with a layer of enhancement on top of it. We also have some very straightforward characters characters like Franklin, who is now a dual emitter enhancer. So basically taking the simple aspects of both worlds, firing super powered aura bullets. But things get much more interesting on the lower half of the Nen ring. Kite and Subone, classically thought of as pure conjurers, are now conjurer transmuters, which I think makes so much more sense of Subone's abilities in particular, because Rider's High is just such a wacky and unique ability, perfectly fusing conjuration and transmutation to morph and fuel her body. And with this new information, we actually have a, we have a bit of a pattern emerging, whereby dual wheel Builders of conjuration and transmutation have a particular ability or have access to a particular specialty with greater ease. Hanzo, for example, is the other way around. He is a transmuter conjurer, both of which are news to us. Previously, his affinity was completely hidden, but he can create an astral projected clone of himself. So again, this fusion of transmutation and conjuration appears to lend itself to Nin users being able to naturally excel at powers that involve their own living matter. Whereas standard conjurers focus mainly on new objects or beings and standard transmuters on raw substances. Whereas this dual affinity is appropriately combining both. I can conjure living matter and then I can transmute the fuel it needs to function. And even Bisky fits into this function. She is stated by Togashi's memo to be a pure transmuter. So it took quite a bit of struggling and it certainly didn't come naturally, but with a strong enough desire, she subconsciously dipped into this phenomenon to transform her own body. Now on the other side of the ring is Melody, who is now an emitter manipulator, which explains her insane proficiency with both, being able to emit aura via music and manipulate the feelings of the listeners. But here is where things things get very interesting because we're inching up against specialization and we currently only have one dual specialist. That is obviously Karapika, who is a Chondra specialist. Very predictable, but I do find it interesting that he doesn't swap pure affinities and instead he's always just been in the dead center of both. So naturally he can access both a lot easier than most, if, well, if any. In fact, this probably explains why some Nen users do go on to become specialists later in life because they already had a natural bias towards that section. And once you've dipped into specialization on oh, there's no 
never going back. That's, that's just what you are now. The only dual affinity we have no example of as of yet is a manipulator specialist. And the closest thing we have is actually Miliki, who is the only character revealed so far to lean specialist. All right, there's a new word, leaning. What does leaning mean? Well, in addition to 50-50 dual affinities, Togashi has made the world of Hunter Hunter infinitely more nuanced or infinitely more complicated and depends how you feel about it. But instead of a 50-50 split, Nen users can now have any ratio split. Miliki, for example, only leans very slightly towards specialist. So he's more like 95% manipulator and 5% specialist. Meanwhile, a character like Leorio sits about here on the Nen ring, being approximately 60% admitter and 40% enhancer. With Leorio, I think that's perfect because he does possess a lot of the very typical enhancer qualities, you know, simplicity and straightforwardness, which I should say is criteria from Hisoka's personality test. However, that personality test at this point might actually be more accurate than water divination to assign affinities because it's actually starting to break down that nuance better than the liquid can. But this affinity leaning does get quite painfully precise apparently in certain places like say Ikalgo, who according to the diagram is like 98% enhancer and 2% emitter, which is one of those things where I'm just like, why is it, why is that so specific? What was Togashi thinking? Is there some like in-world logic to his abilities that means he needs that slight bias? Or is this just a way of adding flavor and diversity to the system? Here's the thing though, for someone like Ikalgo, that 2% emission lean is probably meaningless. However, at the very top levels of Nen, even a minor lean could make all the difference. Because across large quantities of aura, that 2% is going to add up. Let's say you have two equally matched enhancers. One is pure 100% enhancer and the other is 98%. And both of whom also rely on splashing into their neighbor of emission. In a battle of attrition, the enhancer who has that 2% bias towards emission is going to be spending less aura than their opponent. It's a minor amount, but it elevates that probability of victory from razor thin to well and truly in favor of the enhancer who leans even slightly into a mission. That is a very specific situation, but I, th I think that's in keeping because Togashi loves his very specific numeric based situations. And I love that Togashi is always thinking in this way. The world of Nen is always deepening and expanding even this far on. Every new layer brings a whole new degree of complexity, but also in a perfectly natural and non-contradictory way. When a lot of authors make changes to their power system, it often leads to some continuity issues because the rules they originally set were so stringent. But I think that Togashi's great advantage was making the original Nen system just like so vague that he had a lot of room to sculpt and refine it over the course of Hunter Hunter. That's right, I'm saying that Togashi basically improvised his way into creating the perfect power system. Although to be honest, sometimes Nen doesn't even feel like a magic system. Stuff like this almost paints it as more of a fictional science, consistently making new discoveries and revolutionizing what we know about how the world functions. Speaking of how the world functions, Nen leanings can actually change. If characters devote more time to one affinity, then over time, it sort of moves them along on the ring. Sort of like gaining experience, I suppose. So Nen leanings are not a fixed thing that you're just born with, but it's not all about new affinities. Togashi with this memo has actually revolutionized a lot of what we know in regards to pure affinities as well. Isaac Nesro is our prime example here because after years and years and years of unreliable information, he is finally confirmed to be a pure enhancer. This is big, especially for people like me who talk about him on the internet because previously all we had to go on was the data book classification, which is being known to not be so great before. And actually it is wrong again because Togashi has contradicted it as we'll find out soon, but not in the case of Netero. So Netero is an enhancer and what this does is very much solidify his legacy as one of the world's greatest Nen users. Because as a pure enhancer, his 100 type Guanyin Bodhisattva is rooted in his two most unfriendly affinities being conjuration and manipulation. He conjures the statue of Guanyin and then he manipulates it with prayer. The whole prayer thing's a pretty harsh restriction, which is why it's so damn effective. But it's insane to think that the flagship ability of Isaac Netero is composed of his two most inefficient affinities. You know, thinking about it, being a pure enhancer is probably one of the best case scenarios because it's the only pure affinity that gives you the opportunity to conveniently splash into all of the other affinities. I mean, except for specialization, but eh. So it gives you this whole world of diversity, but then again, almost no pure enhancer ever takes advantage of that. They're mostly like, ooh, I punch strong now. But also we do have some big enhancement news because something very surprising is that Togashi has revealed that Komugi is actually a pure enhancer. Previously, she was thought to be a specialist due to the very hyper-specific Nen ability of being like really, really good at Gungi. And I suppose her enhancement might be more abstract in nature, like enhancing her mind to the point where it functions at higher capacities, but only in regards to Gungi. But I do love the idea that the only person in this world capable of defeating Meruem was not only a frail blind child, but on top of that had the most basic Nen affinity possible. And it just makes 
makes the Komugi character that much more amazing to me. But also having brought him up, Meruem, that, that is probably the biggest shock in this entire memo. A lot of people who watch and read Hunter x Hunter tend to assume that Meruem was an enhancer. And I don't blame them for that because he always tends to use his aura in very basic enhancer style ways. Like I said before, punch hard now. However, in two separate sources being the Hunter x Hunter Omnibus Treasure and the Hunter x Hunter Battle Collection, he was defined as a specialist, which look back then, I'm not going to argue with because if anyone deserves to be a specialist, it's, this is definitely the Ant King. But Togashi dropped a whole poor man's rose on this one because according to the memo, Meruem is a pure emitter. You heard correct. The most remarkable Nen user in all of Hunter x Hunter has been given the most traditionally unremarkable category. And I do feel the need to apologize because I always meme on emission and emitters, you know, being the affinity that Togashi forgot. But look, now that they have the Ant King, it is it's pretty damn impossible to make fun of them, which is a shame because I enjoyed that. However, I should say that when it comes to Meruem, his affinity is nigh on meaningless. At his level, he would still be able to use each area minus specialization to a much higher degree than almost any living being which Togashi designates because we also have a new system of identifying just how well one has mastered their affinity with four Nen rating levels being great, excellent, genius, and at the very tippy top, ultimate, which does cause some very interesting actions, which I think will cause people to argue on the internet. Silver and Zeno Zoldic, for example. Silver is rated as a genius level transmuter, while Zeno has achieved the rank of ultimate. Meanwhile, Alaka is the only ultimate specialist, which I imagine is referring to Nanika as well, which also very casually serves this is the first time we've had confirmation that Alaka slash Nanika are Nen users at all, let alone specialists. I mean, given the world that we're reading about, I always assumed that it was Nen, but it's just nice to have that clarification. And Gon very briefly became an ultimate ranked enhancer when he transformed into his adult form. Prior to that, he was a great enhancer. So he literally went from the very bottom to the very top. And now he is simply designated as Nen lost. But this is wild because probably the most unexpected of Nen ratings comes from this character who I think most people probably just forgot about, but it's Abin Garner, the Nen exorcist from Greed Island, who for whatever reason is stated to be an ultimate ranked conjurer. Now at this point, I should say that this doesn't mean that Abin Garner is on the same level as his other ultimate peers. What it actually means is that he has reached the attainable apex of his particular ability and good on him, which makes the rest of this list very intriguing. For example, Moral, who I often praise as one of the best Nen users in the series, only has a ranking of great with his ability. I think it's as a result of Moral needing to use his most unfriendly affinity, transmutation, as a key element of Deep Purple. And because of that, the ability may be forever stifled in the great rating category because Moral just doesn't have the efficiency to produce it in a more efficient way and work up the ranks to excellent genius and maybe ultimate. I guess think of Deep Purple as a budget Swiss army knife compared to like a beautifully forged katana. One of them is peak quality and will always be better at one particular job, which is all of the cutting. But the other, despite its lack of quality, will always just be more generally useful. That's Deep Purple. It was also highlighted that dual affinity users will generally have a harder time reaching the ultimate rating because they generally need to master two affinities as opposed to just one. And also this memo does leave us with certain questions, such as very deliberately singling out Jing as someone who is still unknown, but also the characters listed aren't anywhere close to the full cast of Hunter x Hunter. There are no Dark Continent, no Succession War characters on the chart, so like no Beyond Netero, and in fact, none of the Zodiacs are listed there either, which sadly means no new Pariston information. But this memo is still absolutely insane and will completely redefine Nen discussion going forward. And full credit to Voracious Cake on the Hunt Hunt subreddit for providing these much needed translations.